Alright, hey everybody. Hope everyone's having a great day so far. I am pretty much. I went swimming earlier today to get some exercise and I always forget how tiring swimming can be. Because <laughs> you're having fun in the water and you don't feel hot, but then afterwards you're like, oh wow, that was a good workout. Anyway, I think I'm ready to do some game development now, so let's move over to Unity. Okay, so yesterday, or not yesterday, uh, last time, uh, we were working on these ability scripts, and I went ahead and made a script here for the move target, or the ability move. Um, and this finds all the possible targets for this ability. So I'll just walk through this again. Uh, here we get information about the specific monster and the position. And then this function will return all horizontal neighbors of the specific position. So we check it's valid and that it's empty. Then we get the block below. We check, make sure that's valid and that below is not empty then we know that it's possible to move to this position, so we add it to the table. And then for every possible move we want to add an ability option and then we're going to add an indicator, which would be type move and then the position. So we just need to hook all this up into the game now. So let's look into doing that. So I think where I left off I have all this information. But I think the ability get targets of a color is not called yet. One easy way is to see if this class is used anywhere. And no, it's not. Okay, so we just need to create another class. have the uh, select ability manager and monster manager so we just need to select uh, I guess we'll just call it a target select target manager let's fix up namespace here and um, I think I'll go ahead and copy the select ability manager. Uh, it won't be exactly the same, but this will give me a good start. All right, so let's see, what do we need here? Uh, we obviously need the select phase so we can tell when we're in the target phase. We'll need the scope to see the current monster and ability. All right, and this. Yeah, we send back once the ability has been chosen, so this will be on target chosen. And let's create something new here so I won't forget. Select target complete. Okay, well, yeah, we will need another cancel, I guess, so on select target cancelled. This is just for input. Oh yeah, for the back button. So we want to move back right away. Okay, so this is interesting. I guess it depends how this works because I could see... I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, so I guess we'll see if that problem um, comes or uh, does bother us. but. Basically here, like say if we press back the back button and then we went back into the ability phase, but then um, right away the listener for the ability phase fired, which is uh, right here, and so then it calls this. And then we go all the way back to the monster phase, which is not what we want. Hmm, I wonder what the best way to fix that would be. Uh, 
I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. Hopefully that won't... I don't think it'll cause problems here, but that is something I need to um, worry about. So let's um, check cascading input trigger events. Um, I'll just say target back button to ability cascades to monster. So I kind of know what I'm remembering. So I'll check into that later. We may need to have something a little more complicated than just a variable because we'll need to have like, because basically if we only want one listener to respond. And once this responds, it should stop calling any other listeners, but uh, yeah, I'll have to look into that. Anyway, um, so this should be choose target. Okay, I guess I call it choose actions. Let's rename this to target. Alright, so now this is all good. So now I should go into the I need to go to the play subphase and create this class first of all. Or a subcontroller. It's a new target or select target manager and I guess I should call the ability get targets Lua caller. Go ahead and set that up. And then in the select flow manager I should go ahead and subscribe to those two new events I just created. Select target and on target cancelled. And I think I can copy both these Spell it right. Alright, so basically, if this is choose target, then we want to go back to choose ability. And then if this is choose target, then we go to complete or inactive, and then something else will run. Good. So where do... So I guess actually the select target manager would call this right away and then it would like populate available targets somewhere. I guess we can go ahead and do that now. This will be a query. I'll go ahead and copy these so I don't have to type all that out again. Query handle. Alright, so I guess let's say Lua call. Goals controller. Use query. I guess right when we enter the phase, okay, so we won't want to zero out the ability like that. Um, let's see. So I want to have this currently selected serialized field and target, which will be like the target index. 
right now we have this options. This will have the data. Um, but I'll get to that later. Because I think for now we'll basically call this, but then kind of disregard the return value, uh, which is, is empty at the moment anyway. Okay, so scope dot target negative one, and then we can call the Lua call. And so it needs to know the ability and the monster, which is just a scope. Monster. All right, so now it should call this, which in turn will call this Lua function. So let's just see if it actually runs. We won't actually. Nothing will really happen, but um, this will be a good way to check for bugs right now. Oh, there's some errors. Let's see what this is about. Oh, okay, so we don't need those options anymore. Okay, yeah, this class is obsolete, so I'll just comment this out. But we'll probably end up deleting this um, entire file pretty soon. Okay, I guess I can leave that. just hadn't updated yet. Oh well, so let's see, let's look at some of these warnings now. Um, still compiling because I can't interact. There we go. Okay, so this test move adjacent is also obsolete. This was basically how we got the targets before. We had all this, um, more sophisticated selections. Okay, the warning's gonna stay even though I marked it as obsolete. Oh no, it's still thinking. Okay, yeah, so we don't need to create that anymore. Battle state, so the log is never used. Well, that's okay, we know we will use it in the future because we wanna give um, mods access to past actions, so that's okay. Field block, okay, and it doesn't use any of that stuff yet. Where even is this? Oh, this is just, uh, I had started working on the data structure, I think, but this is, isn't this circular? Um, let's see. In the map, ability target indicator, and option. Okay, yes. This should actually be the indicators. But yeah, we'll work more in these files soon. Okay, then turn option chooser. Okay, this is obsolete, so I don't care. So I'll just clear these for now, and let's go ahead and test it. Okay, got an error. Oh, yeah, it's because, um, yeah, I think this value is empty, or is null because we don't actually load this from the file yet. Yes, yeah, so we need to go do that. All right, so just like any other time we load a data, um, something from data, first we need to look in the mods. So it'd be under the ability file. And public string, get 
targets query. Is that what I want to call it? And then here we have the same thing. Okay, well, that's what I call it here, so I guess I'll just copy the name over. And then in the loading scene in the um, mod loader, we just need to add another Lua function request when we're loading an ability file. Get targets query. And then we need to go to the asset organizer to place that function in the database. So, right here. And we don't have to do any other error checking because. Uh, if there wasn't any errors, it wouldn't have loaded correctly, so we know we're safe. Okay, that's right. Alright, so now it's all good to go. But I need to add the script here. So get targets. No, that's not right. And let me just, well, this is actually the fireball class, but that's okay. I'll give everything the same function for now. And punch class, or not class, uh, file. So everything loaded okay. Okay, exception and ability get targets query ability scripts. Attempt to index a nil value at line 16. So let's see what that is. Okay, so either args monster index is nil or game state is nil. So let's try that. Let's see each one. Game states, parent, args. Okay, let's see what we get now. Okay, so the game state is null. Maybe I. typed it wrong. Alright, so what I'm looking for back here. This Lua interface manager is supposed to create. Oh, it's a battle state, not the game state. Okay. So, yeah, that would be nil because that's the wrong name. Exception ability get targets query function. On line 22, cannot access field is valid. Uh, let's see. Block position. Maybe I made it private. Let's see.
Oh no, I didn't even create an is valid function. So that would be a problem. So public cool is valid. There's a block position. Okay. It doesn't actually have a reference to the field. Well, it's not a big deal. You can just give it one. So private battle field. The only problem is this block position, like the field. Well, the reason I was having a problem because during the map generation is valid. Like you can change the um, size of the battlefield. So you can't really just. Uh, Well, I guess I could just go with whatever it's current, but I don't know, that seems a little weird. This field equals fields. Turn field dot. Okay, so it doesn't have this information here. I can return new exposition. Columns first. And remember, since it's Lua, I need to subtract by one. And then it's valid on map. Okay, and then that will give me if it's valid or not. But if field is null, then we'll always just return true because when you're building the, the map, basically any position is valid if you want it to be. So now I need to find everywhere this is called, and this should throw an exception. Alright, that's all good now. And then I think um, both of the Lua callers also call this class. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Or does it not? Maybe it's the Lua interface manager. Okay, yeah, so this, um, I shouldn't call it this way. I need to call, uh, battle dot. So I need a reference to the battle to keep I need to keep this battle reference around instead of throwing it out. Field and column row layer. Okay, so and I just thought of something. I need to make sure that I delete this once we exit. Um, the play scene. Um, so I'll write a little note here. Clean up the state when exiting. Actually, we probably just delete the Lua because when we exit the battle scene. The only place we can go is either results or lobby, and neither of which will need this Lua. Because we just reload again, so... Clean up and dispose. 
I also have to dispose assets, but... Um, I'll just write that here. Dispose assets below when exiting. Oops, that's not how you spell play. Alright, um, so yeah, I'll just move that down here. I just remember because we set these globals here and we don't want them to stay around forever. Okay, so let's see if Unity gives us any other errors. Okay, well this isn't a big deal because we already have a reference to the battle. Is that the only other place? Pretty sure during map generation there's another one. Maybe I use the other constructor. So the field builder. Oh, it's probably the map creator actually. Yeah, so we don't want to use this. No column row layer. All right. Okay. So let's play it again and see if we get any other errors. Okay. Exception ability targets query. Count access field prototype of user data ability. So I probably just um, oh shit. there's no prototype for the block position. That's true. And let's see. Yeah, I think I slightly messed up the logic here. Okay, yeah, it's because, um, yeah, this is just a block position, so maybe we shouldn't have the is valid in it, because the block positions aren't synonymous with the actual blocks themselves. So what we need to do is get local neighbor block. Battle state, and then we get the block at this position. I guess we can actually do it this way because we'll check if this. Okay, so this is valid is still fine, but maybe instead of is valid, I should rename it to like is in field. that would be better, it makes more sense. And then we have to get the block at this position to see the prototype. And this would be below. Okay, so now I don't think I have any information in the actual proto or the block class yet. So I need public string prototype. And we'll return database. Yeah, so database block prototypes. Um, battle. Field map data index. And name. Yeah, that's right, because this map is just an array of shorts which are the indexes for the block prototypes. 
so that we can get the name. So I think that's all we need here. Does anything create this yet? Okay, yeah, so I do have this get block. Alright, I need to change this to is in field instead of is valid. And it's capitalized in C sharp. Right, so this is is valid on map, it should not say that. Yeah, I'm trying to keep. Oops, I have that down, set up. I'm trying to keep map and field like distinct kind of the field is like the current playing area another way I could call it is the board I don't know what makes more sense or as a map is like the specific setup for one playing area Maybe board would be better, but I'll need to go back through and change everything if I decide to do that. I guess no better time to start than now. Okay, so I'll just start with the Lua script so we can rename it other things later. So I just call this block block. And I guess this should be a board position as well. I think board makes a lot more sense. class, unfortunately. good enough for now. Um, so let's go back to the Lua caller. So where was that? Um, ability get targets right here. And I'll close a bunch of this other stuff. Oops. Okay, so what was that? error was, yeah, prototype, that's just because I was doing this logic a little strangely. So let's look. I think I fixed it all. Oh yeah, this should be battle now. Our board. Let's play again and see if it works now. Okay, 
Okay, so object not set to instance of an object. Ability, get the color at 59, so let's see what that is. Okay, so I just I didn't create this list. Um, it's easy fix. So that's good, that means that on our script, we got down to this part. Unity's been a little unstable since the patch. I wonder if it's because I'm trying to use the new C-sharp version. Uh, that could be so. I mean, I'm playing at my own risk right now, but I've been waiting for this new C-sharp version for over a year, so <laughs> pretty excited about it. Okay, so what happened now? It went back to choose ability. Why? I didn't. So then if I click again, will it have. Yeah, it just goes right back to choose ability. Is it maybe, is that that input bug I was thinking about? But I didn't press back. Okay, let's see. On target selected. Oh, you know what? It is that bug. I think, but we don't. Let me see. Selection. Oh, where is it? Target manager. On set ability. Okay, well, yeah, we shouldn't have subscribed to this right here. I think that's the problem. Now it stays on choose target, um, but if I press escape, it went to inactive. Selection flow manager 24. Oh, right. Well, that's just because yeah, the face printing. Let's see. Let's look down. Selection flow manager on target cancelled at 104. Well, maybe I just set the wrong thing. Yeah, I did this backwards, actually. So on target cancelled, it should go back to choose ability. And then if a target selected, it would go to inactive. I think my stream is pretty smooth right now, but Twitch's dashboard is not showing any data, so sorry if it's a little choppy, it's hard to tell. Twitch dash dashboard has been a bit buggy lately, I've noticed. Alright, so now I'll press escape and let's see what happens. Okay, it does just go to the choose ability. That's nice. So I don't have to worry about that bug just yet. 
but I know it will be a problem. So I need to fix it sooner rather than later, but we'll, I'll worry about that. Maybe next stream. Alright, so now it looks like the entire script ran. So now we need to convert this indicators that the script gave us into um, a format that the game knows how to deal with. Specifically, we need to convert from the Lua interface ability target option indicator classes to the map target indicator and option classes. So let's um, make another script debug. Do I need to return? I guess I can just turn return a list. I don't think I need to have another class. I wouldn't have anything useful in it. So just a little. I don't know if I'll return one. I'll probably already be a list just waiting around for use. So this is translate Lua to game data. Okay, and here we already checked to make sure that the script returned true. Alright, so let's have map ability target option. This is a logic option. Let's create a new one. Actually, I guess I need to loop through first. Okay, maybe this is what we'll do. We'll return a game option and it will give us a Lua option. So, Lua interface. That's a little confusing, they both start with an L. So let's change this to, I guess, game, game option. Okay, so really the only thing that either of these have right now is just a list of indicators. So it's pretty easy. zero i less than lua option indicators count so then we need to create a new map indicator and I guess we'll also get the lua indicator out of the list position for the position, so that's not hard to change. Or not hard to deal with. Yeah. So we just need to change the board position to the index in our board array, and then we just need to translate the string to this actual enumeration. Let's switch indicator type so I guess for now we just have move and oh yeah, of course we want everything to be to upper invariant I guess I should make sure that this string isn't null because that could happen if string is null or empty Uh, otherwise 
guys. I guess I don't need the else because I'm going to throw an exception. But Okay, so throw new... What exception should I throw? I guess a play exception. Ability... So I'm going to change all this from strings to some kind of enumeration later. So I'm not going to worry about being super... Um, descriptive here. Illegal indicator type. And we'll just... Oh, I guess it'd be... Not a legal type. Well, I guess it is legal, but it's um, null right now. Or nil, specifically, if it's Lua. So we'd have the legal one down here if it's some other string that we don't recognize. Stream format. All right. Oh yeah, I don't need that break anymore. Obviously. Okay. So now we're back to this. If it's move, then we can change this type to. Oh, not Lua indicator. It's game indicator. Did I spell that wrong? Oh, I called it. In because of the map, but I want to say I want to use game because the M also is confusing with mods because I think I've used put an M in front for our mod classes before. Yeah, so move. That's the only thing we'll support for now, but in the future there'll probably be others like. Uh, damage. I don't know what else, but we'll see when we get to that point. Okay, so now we also need the position of the indicator, which is really easy to get. Um, so we just create a new hex position from the block position and the Lua indicator. Um, maybe there's an easier way to do this, I wonder. I guess it doesn't really matter that much. And then... Two field map index, so I should change this to board index, but battle, oops, oh I don't have a reference to the battle here, nope, just the game data. Oh, that's silly, of course I need the name for the variable, not just the type. to board as well while I'm here. So we need two board index. Okay, so that's fine. Oh, and I actually I need to subtract one. Um I'm going to make a helper function here, I think. So we'll just give it a board position. And 
it'll just be the Lua position column minus one, Lua position row minus one, and same with the layer. So that way I won't have to do this every time. I should probably do the opposite here in the block position as well. Also does make another class or not class helper function here just for the C sharp side of things. Hex moves as hex position. Here we can clean this up by just calling lens position as hex position to board index. And that takes care of all the switching between um, databases, so I don't have to manually remember to subtract one every time. Sometime I'm going to have some annoying bug and it's probably going to have to do with these Lua indexes. Alright, so where was I? Right here. So I think that's it. So now, um, let's make all these serializable. So it'll show up in the, um, Um, Unity Inspector, and then in the current option scope. Well, I guess first I should, um, and these return values have a list of ability target options. That needs to be public. So I'll just create a new list here. It's probably not the, uh, uh, what's the word? Most optimized, but it will do. And then for each, oh, let's not use var. Do the interface ability target option and What's the class? Uh, Lua options are not class. Uh, what's the list? Then we just need to add the translate Lua to game data. So Lua option. Okay, and that's all. And then we just need to say result dot options equals options, and we're good to go. Let's re rename this to game options, just to um, differentiate it from Lua options here. Here. Oh yeah, and then of course we need to clear the Lua options list when we're done with it. Exception. This should go in a finally block. If you haven't seen finally, uh, basically it will run after the catch 
and also after this try block so we just want to make sure we remove the global because I think if I had it outside here then it wouldn't be removed if there was an exception uh, which could be a little dangerous I guess what's this problem It's not being public now. Oh no, it already is. Alright, so let's try it out. Oh well. It'll all work, but um, I forgot to add it to the scope. Basically, the target manager it needs to get the results. And then we need to add it actually be add range. Okay, so let's um, here, so serialize field private list ability target option. And then I'll just Field, but we don't need to be able to set it. So the target equals negative one, and options equals new. And then the flow manager, when we clear the scope, we also need to clear the target. as well just to make sure. and they each have an unknown indicator. That's strange. And no position. So it created the options but didn't set any values. Um, why was that? We didn't get any exceptions, did I? Oh, it's because, again, did I, I didn't add this to the options, so how come there was even one? Okay, so anyway, it should be, let's just do it up here. So game option dot indicators add oops. Um, game indicator. And what's it complaining about? Oh, this isn't a list, is it? It's just one. Um, I sh since I do have a list in here. I should create a constructor so it will create that list for me. Right, and if 
we try this one more time? Okay, so now, yeah, the indicators each have a one array element. So move to five, move to three, six, and seven, okay. Well, it's difficult to tell exactly which block is which, but at least we know that the values seem to make sense. Because I think this monster is at position. Oh, if it's at 13, yeah, these seem kind of. Oh, it's the block below where the monster can actually move is where the indicators will show. So yeah, that might be fine. If you add 9 to each of these, let's see, so... 14... Yeah, they should all be around 13. So yeah, 14... 12... Yeah, so it looks okay. They seem like they make sense. So now we need some graphic to show these indicators. And this will probably be pretty in-depth, but for now I think what I might do maybe I'll just have like a little pyramid or something that shows right on top. In the chess game, the mods could supply indicators, but I'm not sure if we'll do that in this one. So let's make... Uh, obviously I won't for now, so let's just make a little class. Okay, so I'll just leave it as a cube, actually. Let's move it to zero, zero, zero. All right, and I'll move out dirt block. So we can kind of see how big I want it to be. So let's create another empty object and put it at zero, 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 and put the cube right under it. So basically it will show up like this in the game, which is fine. Let's make it a little smaller, about 0.8. Now we need to bring this up. Okay, so that's good for now. I don't. It's not really supposed to look super nice. All right, so this will be the move indicator. And I can put it just here in the prefab for now. All right. So down here in the user interface, okay, this will be, let's just call it ability indicator creator. second. Alright, that's better. Throughout was starting to get really dry. Alright, so this will be a mono behavior. It'll actually be yeah, a tactile lizard tamer mono behavior so that we can use our easy uh, 
access to. What am I trying to say? The con like we usually say, the components. So this will need the current ability scope for sure. So this is in the map, and I think this ability scope is actually in the placing. Okay. I know I put some of this ability stuff in the placing, or at this in the map scene, because I thought maybe you'd want to like inspect the abilities while you're in the team build. I don't know. I think I might be getting a little ahead of myself. Selection scope, not ability scope. Yeah, alright. Okay. That was the problem. So scope equals get loot component. And so we need some message that will let us know that we need to update. The indicators. Um, I guess the easiest way to do that will just have some, just create some message. So sub two message. Uh, let's see. On. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna need to have a tag here for sure. Tag. Play. Set. So for now, I'll just have serialize fields. Does not show up. Oh yeah, because we're not using any yeah, Unity stuff yet. So private game object move indicator prefab. Before I forget, I'll create this class, or this list. Okay, so when we refresh, I'll just go ahead and um, hide all the currently shown prefabs. Okay, I think I included this class. This is a really nice class that another streamer named Quillite Teen made to help you keep object pools for a bunch of different prefabs. And I think I'll use it for this instead of trying to manage it myself. But you can, uh, if you just search simple pool Quillite Teen, I'm sure it'll come up if you're interested. Um, so D 
respawn game object. And I think that's all I have to do. Okay, so now that we've taken care of that, we need to find all the current indicators. So, or well, we probably don't need the index actually. Or no. First, we gotta go by the option. Okay, so one thing. Well, right now, I just want to show all the indicators, so I won't worry about this. But somehow, we'll want to indicate which target we're currently hovering over. But we don't even do that for abilities or monsters yet, so maybe I shouldn't worry about it. Scope. Options and then for each gosh, can't type indicator and option indicators. All right, so I just need to switch the indicator type. We only care about move right now. Um, let's pull this out into another function. I want to extract. It's not going to let me do that easily, is it? Okay then. So then we'll have the ability indicator. Nope, not that. Ability target indicator. Oh, hey, Fire Dragon, good to see you again. Thanks for stopping by. Alright, so yeah, I did spell this right. bit slow tonight. And yeah, I just want to pull this out. Um, I don't need that. I'll clean that up a little bit. Okay, so I'll just get a reference to the game object that we create. I should um, set a default value there. And then game object equals simple pool spawn move indicator prefab. Um, we'll do the position in just a second. Okay, so if oops. If a game object does not equal null, then we'll want to set its parent um, to us, so that way it won't clutter up the Unity um, hierarchy. And then we'll want to set the position. How do I get that? Check transform. I guess I could look and see how I do it. Obviously, in the block creator. Let's see. I think we have hex position. Oh, I don't have that. From map index. Okay, and then I can just give it the bat battlefield. I don't have that class yet, though. Well, it's easy to fix. We just need that because we need the current battle so we can know the size of the the board 
so that we can position this from an index. So that Okay, and here's another instance of the old. Oh, okay, this is right. But then I do I have. Oh yeah, two world. That's what I want. Okay, but I don't have the radius and height here. Um, let's just do zero for now, and I'll come back to that. What's it complaining about? Oh, I need the index, of course, which that is the indicator position. All right, so let's change this to from board index. Okay. So let's see where else do I use this function. Okay, so right now I'm just lazy and have everything set to 1. Um, well, these are all temporary classes, so... That's okay, but obviously this is going to need to be changed. Probably the mod will be able will need to be able to set the radius and height for um, each block. Uh, but anyway, um, is that all I need to do? Oh, I need to add this game object to the alive list. Um, what's it called? Shown prefabs. I'm surprised I actually remembered. I always forget to do that. And. I think that's it. Okay, so we have block prefabs. In fact, I'm going to name this test to emphasize I need to change this. I'll just duplicate this object. So, test indicators. And we'll add the indicator creator and give it the reference to the prefab. Okay, so the only other thing I need to do is have something call this message, which would be the target manager. Right after it updates the options here. Okay, so private message claim on uh, options change equals controller claim message uh, TLT tag no, that's not it um, options there we go So this will be called here. Why is it on? Oh, it's send, not call. But it can also be called on the select flow manager whenever it clears the scope right here. Which one is that called? At the very beginning and also when it exits the choice phase. Often, but I guess that's okay. okay. So this will be a message that will have multiple callers and subscribers because it's more like a notification. Oops, that's not where I want to put that. So I'll go right here. And I'll just copy this too. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, it might be a better idea to make each of these. Well, I don't know, that's kind of confusing. 
No, I think the way I'm doing it is fine. But another way to do this is you could make each of these variables its own, like, Beluga variable complete with, um, like, access control and subscriptions and everything, but uh, that's probably a little overkill. Anyway, just when these options are cleared, Maybe this class does not need to have it after all. I think if we just try to keep everything in the target manager to keep things cleaner. And we can just call this every time the phase changes. Oh, well, no, because. Yeah, that's not safe, I don't think. Because this, this function could be called maybe before the options are actually cleared. Um, yes, I'm sorry, going back and forth. Okay, so we can just say on options change and send. So now sent, well here I'll just show, but since I have two claims to that message, it will actually throw an error because by default it only allows one claim per message just to try to encourage good programming practices, but um, we're using this message more as a notification like I say, like I said. Yeah, see here's the exception. Uh, well, it's actually throwing a ton and it throughout the one that we actually cared about. Look, well, maybe that is just the one that's there. But anyway, um, so what I have to do, it's pretty simple. I go to the component preferences and then I just add a specific override for that one component to have it have unlimited claims. So let's see. On ability options change. So yeah, unlimited claims and unlimited subscriptions. And we do want it to print warning, so I'll leave that there too. So now everything should run okay, unless there's some other problem. Okay, so there is another problem. Oh, okay, I know what it is now. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I was saying this must be claimed correctly, and that's because, again, I think I've had this problem before. Oh, where is it? Selection Flow Manager. It's because when this constructor is created, the claim to the message has not been activated. So when we try to send this call, or send this message, we don't actually have a claim to this message, and so it um, complains to us. So I don't really need to clear the scope right there anyway. That was originally just to set everything to negative one, but that happens automatically in the constructor now, so that's okay. No, no errors. Okay, and we see the indicators, and they're on the right, all in the right places. So now that means we can move here, 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 and there's only four. So we we know that there's obviously not one inside these blocks because we can't move into another block, obviously. All right, so now I need to. Yeah, thanks, Fire Dragon. It is a nice improvement, I think. Now we can actually see what the game is thinking. So now, I think we have time tonight. 
we can click one of these tiles and maybe we can get the blunts to the move. That might be a little bit much for 10 minutes, but let's see. Okay, so... Now I can copy some of the code from the old option selector. Where is that? Turn options chooser. Because we had this on select button press. So yeah, we still do need to make sure we're in the right phase. Okay, and then we need to get the mouse pick event, which just lets us know what our mouse is cur currently selecting. We used it to select the monster earlier. This is not correct anymore because, yeah, we need to. We just won't use that. Okay, so now we know that there's a block chosen, but we have to actually see if this block is one of the ones indicated in the turn options. So let's. Uh... This will probably get confusing as we add more and more abilities, but um, for now I'm just going to look through and see if the block is the same as one of the indicator positions. Um, that's probably not a good idea actually. Um, I think that we should try to separate the actual selections from the indicators maybe. I don't know. The indicators are for input. Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna go back on what I just said. But anyway, so let's see. Private. Int. Selected. Option from block. Okay, so basically, for now we'll just look through the options on each of their indicators and if um, any indicator has the same position as this block, then we'll return that option. So, uh, int i equals zero, i less than scope options count. Okay, and then for each of our indicator, uh, let's do it this way, ability option, scope, options, i. So in option dot indicators, so if indicator type is move and position is the same as the selected block, then we return i. That's okay for now, and here we'll return negative 1. So I, I have a feeling we'll be rewriting this, but for now this will be okay. So option index equals selected, option from block. And if option index is greater than or equal to zero, then we'd set. Uh, should this be called target? It should be option index, shouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I guess 
guess I will rechange it. Or rename it. Set that we can just call on target chosen. Alright, so now I just need to register for the select button press. Which I can get right here. And I think this could be an instance of that input problem I've been talking about this stream. But let's hope that everything works and we can test this out. Did I get the mouse? Oh yeah, right here, okay. Okay, it did work because it moved to inactive. And then if we move, if we look at the debug, you can see in the scope that the target is two, which would be this one to here. Well, I'm guessing this is number six since they matched up. All right, so now what we would do is we'd go back to Lua and basically tell the Lua script that we selected this specific option and then the Lua script would build us a list of actions for the monster to take to actually do that. So in our position, um, in our case it's pretty simple, there's just a move action from here to here. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, we won't actually move the monster there tonight. I think we'll get there tomorrow. So yeah, maybe I'll try and figure out what I want to do about that input problem because I know that's going to cause me trouble in the future. Uh, we've been lucky that it's good for now, but um, I guess that's where we'll stop. Okay, got everything. Just trying to think, did everything work how I expected? Yeah, I guess it did. I was just, um, I guess in my mind, I was thinking I'd see the monster move yet, but um, we're just not at that point. Although, the scope, shouldn't the options have changed? I mean, okay, well, it should have cleared the scope, which would make these disappear, but I'm actually kind of glad it didn't because I wanted to be able to check the scope here to see what ability was actually selected, so um, that's okay. But anyway, yeah, I think that's all for me for tonight. Um, thanks everybody for coming by, chatting and watching, I really do appreciate it. I'll be back tomorrow around 8.30 Eastern, and we'll continue working on abilities like I was talking about, and hopefully actually get that gold little model to move again and then we can do some more fun abilities like damage maybe knock the other silver monster around or something uh, but anyway yeah thanks everybody again and i hope to see you tomorrow all right bye bye